Okay. Um, so my name is Doug Hoffman. Uh, I work uh, at Sage Tree Solutions, which is a Drupal shop down in uh, San Diego. Uh, we've grown from, uh, when I joined about two years ago, uh, from four people to about a dozen with a few uh, extra folks, uh, freelancers that we work with. And we pretty much 95% of the time do Drupal work, um, build Drupal sites for our clients. And you can find me on D.O in a lot of places. Um, so we're, we're big Drupal shop down there. Uh, we're actually having a raffle, so if you stop by our, we're one of the sponsors of camp, so if you stop by our table out by the Pacific Ballroom, um, I think it's like a $100 gift certificate and a couple other things. All we ask is you uh, sign up for our newsletter or give us your business card. Um, so stop by for that. We also have these cool stylus, uh, they, they drop between a, a stylus for your phone and pens there, and I got about 10 of them up here, so if you want to grab one up here when we're done, feel free. And my cards are right there. Um, and we are looking for a senior architect, uh, Drupal architect kind of folks. So um, if you're new to Drupal, that's probably not a good fit, but we are looking for folks like that. So if you know anybody, please let us know. Um, so this talk is basically going to give you, hopefully, the uh, an intro to the important parts of Drupal to know about uh, so that you go build Drupal sites in a good way as opposed to in a structurally bad way. Um, and what do these three, thing comes, three things have in common? Well, water skiing and Drupal and mountain biking are three of my passions. Um, and what I learned with Drupal early on is uh, what I learned in water skiing, and you can see in mountain biking, is that they can all hurt. Um, so water skiing, if you fall, I ski the slalom courses, you, you're going 40, 45 miles an hour. When you fall, that water actually really hurts. And I'm not a very good mountain biker, so I'm always crashing, and that definitely hurts. And learning Drupal can hurt if you don't start out the right way. So the, the intent of this session, the reason I do this session is to um, help you guys get going in the right way as opposed to the wrong way. Um, and I tried to do it on my own by watching videos and reading books and stuff. And there's really a set of stuff you want to know before you get going. And hopefully, hopefully you'll walk away with a little bit of that today. So quick glossary in Drupal world. Um, if you heard us saying D.O, we mean Drupal.org. Modules, libraries, and themes are sort of the building box of Drupal. Uh, Drupal 6 is still out there. Drupal 7 is uh, the latest and greatest. And Drupal 8 is on the horizon. Drupal 8 is going to have a lot of changes, but in my mind, even though it's, come, it's either gone code complete or about to go code complete, using it in a practical sense, in a real world setting for clients, is at least a year or more away. Um, so, you know, I would sit through Drupal 8 sessions and sort of learn about it, but really Drupal 7 is the one to learn if you're trying to build websites today. Um, everything, every piece of content in Drupal is called a node, it has a title and a body. Um, comments in Drupal are what, what you think they are. Taxonomy will we'll actually build a little one, but it's a way to categorize stuff. It's a really important theme in Drupal. Content types, interesting in Drupal, is you can build your own content type. So in other systems like WordPress, you're sort of limited to what they give you. Here, you, it's sort of the, you know, the world is your canvas kind of stuff. Another one people miss is uh, media uh, image styles. So Drupal will automatically resize and crop and do all sorts of things to images for you, so you don't have to use Photoshop anymore. Um, pages are what you think they are. On any given page, Drupal breaks things up into regions, and then you put things in regions like blocks, which are pieces of information. It might be a menu or a picture or a static block. Um, there's a whole menu system in Drupal. You can build new menus. Um, views are really important. We'll do a couple of views. There are lists of content that get displayed on the page. And then Drupal also has a, a powerful user roles and permission system. So that's sort of the quick version of stuff. Um, if you're looking for sort of my favorite module list, this is uh, mine. Um, it's in the slides that you can download. So what we're going to do this morning, or I'm going to do in front of you, it's a little bit performance art. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Hopefully my VPS uh, is nice to me this morning. But in 17 steps, we're going to basically build out a Drupal site. Um, we're going to get Drupal up and running, build a little brochure site, do some user roles and permissions, build some content types and taxonomy, use image and URL management to set it up, and build out a little web form, pick a theme, and the site will be up and running. Um, the site we're going to build is one for a little company called Adventure Travel. They, they take people on uh, tours. They have a series of guides that write blogs, um, and we're going to get sort of close to this quickly uh, this morning in hopefully 45 minutes. So first step is to get Drupal up, uh, up and running. So now I'm going to go live. Oops, go away. Um, so this is, this is actually the reference site sort of we're going out to build. Um, you can see uh, this is a list of upcoming tours. There's a slideshow there. I click on this page. It shows me all the guides that can take me on tours if the network is fast. And this one is a list of the tours we can take people on. 
So this is a little more built out than we're going to do, but we're going to get pretty close to this in our little demo here. So I'm going to skip off that. So what I've done to preload this is I have a VPS on HostGator. I've downloaded Drupal Core and a bunch of modules and a couple themes, and I uploaded them to my site there just in a folder, and I put it in a subdirectory called blanked alive and 45 a on my uh, DouglasCHoffman.com domain. And all I've done is I've fired up don't even do that. If I just fire it up, it's going to take me to the install page for Drupal, which was here. So we're just going to run through this real quick. So we're going to install Drupal in English. We have to tell Drupal where our database is, so I've set an empty, uh, an empty MySQL database up for us. And I think that's the one we're going to use. And uh, I need a, oops, no, before I make the wrong first mistake, I'll get that one right. So I have to tell Drupal where that database is. So Drupal consists of code, a bunch of PHP stuff, CSS, all that kind of stuff. It consists of another thing that we talk about, the files. So when your users of your site upload images or PDFs or whatever those in the file system, and a, a MySQL database. Um, and all the big content management systems, Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, uh, all work on that same technology. Oh, no. See your existing site. Let me try a different one. Looks like somebody got ahead of me and tried to install this. Good. Always have a backup. I must have started that install and forgot and didn't and reset the database to be blank. So this is standard Drupal install. It's running off, doing whatever it does in the background to set me up. And uh, Drupal has this concept of a site name, so I'm going to call it Adventure Travel to match our thing. It needs an email address. I'll use my email address. Um, this is the important part. The first user that Drupal creates, which it which it creates as part of the install, is called user1. User1 is a special super user, always has all privileges. So the user ID and password to this account is 1A, you want to remember when you install, and B, you want to keep close. Um, we typically don't turn over user1 to our clients. We keep it for ourselves. So now I've um, installed Drupal. I can visit my new Drupal site. There it is. Not much out of the box, but it's up and running. Um, so the next thing typically we're going to do is we're going to go out and turn some modules on. So I'm going to go to the modules. You can see the little menu bar at the top. This is standard Drupal one. And there's a particular module I like called um, module filter. So we do a lot of this. We go over to the modules page. These are modules I've pre-installed already. They wouldn't necessarily come with Drupal 8. So in that zip file, they'd all be there. And I'm going to turn that one on. And the thing to remember about Drupal modules, every time you turn one on, it sort of sprinkles throughout Drupal other stuff you can do all of a sudden. So in this case, you can see now I have a little filter list at the top of my module page, which makes it really easy to find the models I want to turn on. So in, actually, I want to turn off comments just to make it easier for what we're doing here today. I'm going to turn that off by unchecking it. And then I want a couple other modules to turn on. So. There's a cool module called Devel, which we'll play with. We're going to turn that on. IMCE is a file upload uh, module, so we want to allow people to upload images, so we'll use that. And we want to put in a WYSIWYG editor. Uh, what you see is what you get. And we'll turn that one on. So I'm telling Drupal, Drupal knows these modules are sitting out there because I downloaded them and put them on the VPS, but I have to tell Drupal I want to use them. So Drupal always is a blank slate that you have to build up. Um, so out of the box, you have a little bit of work to do. 
So we've turned those guys on, and now we want to configure our WYSIWYG editor for use. So we're going to go over to configuration, and we're going to go to the WYSIWYG profiles. So that menu item wouldn't have been there until I turned that WYSIWYG module on. And we're going to tell Drupal has this concept of text formats. You can create your own. We're going to say um, to use filtered HTML and full HTML for, uh, we're going to use the CK editor. CK editor is a JavaScript library, so I also preloaded that um, for you guys. So the WYSIWYG module in Drupal went out and talked to a different module called libraries and found out that the CK editor was available um, and basically uh, allowed us to use it. So now having set those up, and I can make more of these text formats, but I basically often just use filtered HTML. And the key thing here is this is what you can, you can turn on, what people are allowed to do when they're editing content on your site. So I'm just going to make it bold and italic that filtered HTML people can use. And in full HTML, I'll just make it slightly different in these buttons and plugins, plugins so we know it's different. Um, so let's see. Let's let them do bullet lists. And I'll get dangerous and let them do source. And I'll let them upload files. So I'm basically uh, configuring the WYSIWYG editor for use. And now I'm going to configure that IMC module, which um, we also turned on a minute ago. This also has this context except of these profiles. So Drupal has roles, uh, user and roles. Out of the box, they have administrator role, authenticated user, and anonymous user. We're going to add another role later. It's really easy to do. And different roles allow people to do different things. So we're going to let the administrator use user one's profile, which is sort of lets them upload files of any size. And authenticated user, we're going to use the sample profile above. So I'm just going to save that. And now I can edit these profiles just so you get a sense. I'm not going to change anything. But you can see here in the user one profile, zero means they can upload any file size. If I go back and look at the sample profile, they can only upload one megabyte files. So a lot of times in Drupal, you got to sit down and understand all these configurations and decide what you're going to allow people to do. So you have to go through and sort of set this stuff up. So now we got the uploading set up. Um, and I think that should do it. So now if I click this button to add some content. Out of the box, Drupal has two types of content you can create, articles and basic pages. So if I click hit this to create an article, um, I can see um, this is set to filtered HTML, so I just have those two buttons that I enabled. But if I set it to full HTML, I get the other buttons. So I would make, I have to make decisions about what I want to allow people to do. And first time I was doing this stuff, I had no idea that you had to set up all these buttons. And it's a pain in the neck for if you want every button, because there's no little module that turns them all on. You sit there and turn them all on. Um, but so at this point, we've, sort of, we've got a Drupal 7 site, and we set up the WYSIWYG editor for it. So the next thing you want to do is build out a little basic site. So we're going to add some content. In this case, we're going to add a new page. So let's add a, a home page. So Drupal has its own concept of a home page, which is what it's showing us there. But we want to uh, do something a little different and have our own page. I'm just going to, oops, that's not the one I want. I'm just going to grab some text for it. So a little text for our website, for the home page. Um, I'm going to set a path for it. So I'm going to say, if you go to slash home, that's the page. So when you're editing content, there's all these tabs on the bottom that give you other things you can do to that particular piece of content. So now I've saved my page. There's the home page. If I click on the home tab, it doesn't go to the home page because I haven't told Drupal that's the home page. I just called it a home page. So if I go under configuration, under site information, uh, there's this stuff I can add in. So Let's add a slogan. We'll take you to your limits. And then I can say where the home page is. So since I made it slash home, I'll turn that here. And there's also these other uh, access denied. You could have pages for this kind of stuff. But if they get an access denied, I'm going to assume they want to log in, take them to the user page. And if they get a page not found, let's at least take them to the home page for the moment. So now if I click on the little home button, we went to that page we created. So we've created a home page for our site. And we've told Drupal that's where it is. Um, so let's just do a quick uh, add another page. We'll make this uh, about us, same text. In this case, I'm going to tell Drupal I want this to be in the menu system. That first making the home page was slightly different. And Drupal has a series of, of menus. The main menu is the one across the top, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to give it a URL of slash about. Oops, would help if I could type. Um, slash about, save that guy. And now we have a home and about, but I probably want the tabs in a different order. So under structure, there's a menus sub-item. And these are all the menus that came with Drupal. The main menu is the one I care about. If I click list links, 
shows me the, the links for this menu. And anytime I see these crosshairs, it's drag and drop stuff. So I just drag that up, save the configuration, and now my tabs are in the uh, order I want them to be in. Okay. Um, now, I also might want to have, I might want to get rid of like this search box and this navigation here. I actually don't want that on my site. And much as I love Drupal, our client isn't going to like Powered by Drupal down in the bottom of the footer there. So Drupal has this whole block system that it uses. So if I go to Structure Blocks, there, this is a list of all the blocks in my site. Ones that aren't used are undisabled, and ones that are in use are up here. So if you look at a page in Drupal, you know you typically have regions, Drupal regions, and it's typically at least header, left side by right side by content, and footer. Different themes in Drupal have different regions, so you have to sort of figure out the theme you're going to use and what the regions are to allow you to place things. So uh, I'm going to say, let's take the search box out of the sidebar first. Let's get rid of the navigation. Oops. And let's get rid of the user login. Did I move that? Yeah. And then let's get rid of the powered by Drupal there. So I'm going to set those all to none, save that. And now those blocks haven't gone away. I just have them turned off. They're not going to show up anywhere. And if I click on this demonstrate block regions here, sort of an ugly thing, but I can see now all these yellow boxes are where this theme has regions. So this theme has a lot of regions, a header, a feature, sidebar left, sidebar right, highlighted, threes, fours, and a footer down at the bottom. So if I ever want to see what regions are available, I can go to the blocks page and it'll show me. I'll exit that. So the next thing we're doing is let's put a uh, block in the footer that has some type, some information in it. So we're going to put information about the company down there. I'm going to cheat. I got my uh, text already written over here. And I'll just stick that in the block. So we're creating a static block with some text in it. Down at the bottom here, you can have some control over where that block shows up, like only on these pages, on all these pages, only show it for a particular role, those kinds of things. I'm just going to make a static block that's everywhere. And uh, there's the company one, so I'm going to put it in the footer. So now if I go to the home page, we got that nice little block down there in the bottom of the thing. So that's the block system that we use to build that up. And then we probably want to contact us page, so Drupal actually comes with a module for that. So if I go back to the modules page, use my little filter here to find the contact page, there it is. I'm going to turn it on. And then I want to configure it. First, I'm actually set permission. So in Drupal, there's a permissions page. And every time you turn something on in Drupal, you have to decide who's going to be allowed to do it. Drupal doesn't automatically give things to anybody. Uh, so here's a user site-wide contact form. So I'm going to turn it on for anonymous and authenticated users. And you always go to, go to the bottom of the pages in Drupal, typically, and click Save somewhere. If you don't save, just click in the checkbox, didn't turn it on. Um, so let's go back to the modules page and get to the configure and the contact page. So I'll click configure there. So Drupal in this relatively simple contact us page has this idea of categories. Let's add a new category. So we're doing this adventure travel site. So a category might be I want to know about a tour. When somebody fills that form in, who do I want to send it to? I'll just send it to my personal address. And, you know, what do you want to say to them? We're done. Thanks for contacting us. They'll get an email back. I want this to be a fault thing, so I'll say yes. Save that. So the contact module creates a page called slash contact. So I'm going to go back into the menu system and add that in as a link to our main menu. So let's say it, call it contact us. The path that the module creates is slash contact. And we'll put it in the main menu again. So now I got this contact page, um, you know, and I can have categories. And if I fill this in, it actually will send an email right now. So I've set that up without sort of having to do anything with it. So that's we're getting there. Um, so the next thing we we'll do is talk a little about user roles and permissions. So on this little reference site, we're trying to build. Um, we're going to hire guides. They're going to take people on tours. So I want people to be able to check out the guides, read their bio, see what they do. And when they look at a tour, I want them to know the guide that they're going to be taken on. Um, and we're going to let guides write blog entries so you can sort of learn a little bit about them through their blog entries. 
So the first thing I would do is go back to our development site and go over to modules again. This is a common theme. And Drupal does have a blog module of its own. Um, there are other ones you can use. But we'll turn the blog module on. And like the, um, like the contact module, the blog module creates a page for us called slash um, blogs. Or blog, I believe. Yeah, blog. So we're gonna we're gonna add that into our menu system, and I'll put it above about us. So now we have a blog page. Nothing's on it because nobody's made any blogs. Um, so the next thing before I create any blog entries, I'm gonna create a new role because I want to say, tell Drupal guides are allowed to do blogs. So under people, in this permissions tab, there's a roles button. And these are the roles out of the box. Anonymous, authenticated, anybody logged in, and then administrator, special privileges. So a, a role in Drupal is nothing more than a name. So I'm going to call it guide. Sort of makes sense. Now if I go over to permissions, though, and if you remember before, we only saw the three permissions, uh, anonymous, authenticated, administrator. What are you thinking? I didn't click. And now we have guide, right? So we want to go through this and find where blog entries are permissioned. And that's down here. So we're going to allow blogs to create new, uh, edit their own, and delete their own, but not play with the other guys. And again, Drupal, anytime you turn anything on, doesn't automatically give it to everybody. So I I'm adding it into as an administrator it has control of all, all of that stuff. And then there's also this uh, permission down here called View User Profiles. Since I want anonymous users to come to the site and be able to look at the guide's profiles, their bios and stuff, I need to allow anonymous and authenticated users to do that. You'll notice when I click the authenticated user, that's the base user logged in. It gives it every other role that permission when I click that. So now I've basically set it up so we have a special role called Guides, and they're allowed to do blogs. So the other thing that Drupal is really big with is everything in Drupal is fieldable. So a lot of people uh, are used to sort of giving, when I go to edit a piece of content on a website, I get one big WYSIWYG text box that I can stick pictures in it and text and do all this stuff. That's called unstructured data, right? And that means that it's all in that big box and it may look nice, but if somebody says, oh, I want that picture on this page, you know, in this uh, you know, particular instance, it's hard to do. So what you want to think about in Drupal is the fields you want to have available to do interesting things with as, a, as opposed to stuffing everything in one big text box. That'll make sense in a second, I hope. So um, I'm going to go to configuration account settings. So these are user accounts and I can click on manage fields and it's there's for user accounts I get a username, there's actually a picture and not much and a password and not much else. But since Drupal, everything is fieldable in, in Drupal 7, I can add things like, let's give everybody a first name. Uh, that'd be text. Where's text? There it is. Um, and I add the fields one at a time. I'm going to set the maximum first name to 12 characters. I'm going to make it a required field. Let's add a last name. Oops. Text. Make that required as well. And I'm just taking all the defaults on the other stuff. At some point when you do this, you want to look at all those options and decide if they're relevant to you or not. But I know I don't need them. Uh, we'll make this a long text, so it'll be text box for the bio. We'll make that required as well. So we want all our guides to fill out their first name, last name, and their bio. So now you can see I've changed how Drupal thinks of user accounts, and I've put fields on them. Limited by your imagination. I could put in phone number, email, I could do all sorts of stuff here, but that's enough for what I wanted to do here. And just the key point is that everything in Drupal is fieldable and you want to make fields so that you can use them in interesting ways. We'll see when we do um, views why that's really, really important. Um, so there's, there was another module we had enabled a minute ago called Devel. And Devel is a cool thing when you're in development um, to create content. So I get this generate content guy here. Oops, you know, before I do content, I'm going to generate, there's develop generate users. So I'm going to make a few users, so let's make 25 users for our site. Let's make them all guides. One of the important things when you're building out a site, so people make comps and they say this is how I want it to look. 
But then when you put real data in there, everything messes up because you get long titles and it breaks stuff. So using Devel Generate to generate users and content is a great tool for Drupal so that you can see how the site's going to actually look with real content, not just in pictures. So I'm just making 25 dummy users. They're going to get Lipsum Orum kind of names. Um, made them. If I go over to people, my list, I can see all these dummy names that were made. All the, the, the ones that were made are guides. So I got some users in my system that I can sort of play with. And now I'm going to go generate some, using Devel Generate, uh, these are the content types. Since I turned on the blog module, now I can create articles, pages, and blog entries. So let's just make uh, 50 blog entries. This is where I could say, well, I want to test long titles. So let's make the titles uh, eight words long. The only thing to remember about Devel Generate users and content is it also allows you to delete the content. but you only do that when you're OK getting rid of all content, whether it was generated by Devel or by you. So never put in real content and use Devel Generate to delete stuff unless you really want to hurt yourself. So now if I go to our little blog page, now we, there's a whole bunch of blog entries. So we can see that it filled out that. And Drupal's doing all sorts of stuff to you know, read more. I can go see this person's all their blog entries. So Drupal behind the scenes is sort of doing all that kind of stuff for me. So the next thing we want to do uh, for our site is we want to build out a little page that shows in three up our guides and lets me click through to their user profiles and read about them. So there's a module called Views. Views is going to be core in Drupal 8. Uh, there aren't many worthwhile Drupal sites you'd build without Views. So Views is really important um, to use. So I'm going to find uh, Views, and you also have to turn on Views UI, otherwise you can't actually configure anything, which doesn't make any sense to me, but that's the way it works. Click Save. Drupal's going to tell me, oh, you also need this other uh, required module called Chaos Tools or C Tools. I happen to already install it, so Drupal says, you got it. Do you want it? And I say, yeah. So now I have that enabled. And now if I go over to my structure page, again, remember, every time I turn something on, there's more stuff showing up in Drupal. You'll sort of get used to that. I can create views. It's a new thing down here. So if I click on views, um, here we go to add views. Before I do that, I'm going to actually give you a couple of slides. I usually just leave all the slides behind. But views are really important. So um, let's talk about views for just a second. So views are lists of content, right? Lists of content. So. Um, the slideshow on the home page, you know, it's going through four or five slides typically, right? That's a list of slides. So it's a view. Remember that. It's a view. And we configure it in views. If I want to show a table of stuff, that's a list of the tours. It's a view because it's a list of stuff in Drupal. So it's a view. If I have a map with pins on it, you wouldn't think that this is a list of stuff. But when you think about it, those pins are a list of locations in the world. That's a view. Um, we showed that one already. Um, on the home page, we want to show our three most upcoming tours in the right sidebar there. That's a list, it's, so it's a view. Um, we're going to create a, a three up set of pictures of our guides. It's really a list of guides, so it's a view. Uh, and I know I'm being redundant, but views are really important. So anytime you think of, yeah, I've got to put up a, these things, it's a list. If it's a list, it's almost always going to be a view. So you want to use views to build stuff. Key point. If you don't walk away with anything else, walk away with that. Um, so what are we going to call this? We'll call this our guides view. What are we going to show? So not, we're not going to show content. We're going to show users, right? And we want users uh, unsorted. We're going to make a page. We'll just do that. We can make a block as well. Um, we're going to make it a grid view of fields. This is why fields are important. We're going to, we wanted to make it, I forget, three or four up, so it needs to be a multiple of 12. So items display, we'll use a pager, let's put it in the menu system, let's put it in the main menu, and continue and exit. So this is sort of the preset up for views. So now I've got this view, and I can sort of see down here in this preview mode, update preview, it's, it, by default, it's showing a list of usernames, and I could click on them and go to the user. So you can use this preview down here to see sort of what's going on. So I want to show, get their pictures as well. So I'm going to set up the fields for this view that I'm going to display. So this is why it's important in Drupal to set fields up. So remember, we created first name, last name, bio fields of users. So now we can use them in our view. Um, so let's add some fields. And um, actually, all I want is their picture. So user profiles come with a picture. So I'm just going to put that in there. 
Um, and since we're doing a grid, I don't need it. I don't want to say picture colon and then show the picture. That looks pretty stupid. Um, and I'm add. Let's put their first name. I want to put their first name under there. So I'm looking for that field we created before. That's that field. And again, I don't want to say first call in their name. It's pretty, probably pretty obvious it's their name. And this name one that came by default is the username. That probably doesn't mean much to user, so I'm going to remove that field. So now we can see down here, we're seeing a picture and a first name, even though it's generated, so it's a stupid name. We got an empty block here. Anybody got an idea why that empty block is showing up? We're trying to show guides, right? So right now, we don't have any filter set to say show just guides. So that's actually the admin user one role who doesn't I have never uploaded a picture for. So the next thing we'll do is we use the filters here. So right now, by default, it's just showing all active users, so anybody that's a user on the system. So I'm going to add another filter. It's going to be based on their role is one of I just want to show guides. So now the blank one went away because I'm now just showing the guides. And then I probably want I probably want to sort them in some fashion. So let's sort by oops, their first name. So now we can see they're going two, four. So it looks like they're going up alphabetically. That good. There's all sorts of other stuff I could uh, do over here, but that's pretty much a view. Um, so I'm gonna. In views, you always have to, when you're all done with that stuff, everybody forgets, click that save button. Um, views actually get remembered for about a minute, so if you move off the page and you didn't save it yet, move back quickly and you can probably save it. So now that we've done that save, remember we told views to create a, a new page called guides. Um, I'm probably going to go back to the menus just because I like my things in my order. Guides, they're pretty important. I'll put them ahead of blogs. So if I go to our guides page, there's our four up view of guides. And Drupal's given us a pager so we can sort of move through our guides. If I click on a guide, it's going to take me to the, their profile page and there's their bio and stuff. And then I can, from their profile page, I can go see the blog entries they've recently done. Okay, we're moving along pretty well. So that's views. Um, that's good. The next thing we're going to do is um, build out a content type. So first we're going to and the content type is going to be for our tour. So we want to have a page that's going to list our tours. You know, it's going to have a name, a description, a photo, a date. Who's going to take us on the tour? So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to categorize my tours into different categories. So in Drupal, that's called a taxonomy or a vocabulary. I'm going to add a new one. So like the role stuff, um, I, it's just a name that I pick out of the hat. So I'm going to call it tour type. And then uh, I can add terms to it. So out of the box, Drupal has one called tags. That's freeform tagging. I don't like it much because then if you put in auto and somebody puts in auto and car, meaning the same thing, we don't know that. So I like structured taxonomies. So I can add terms to my taxonomy and they'd be things like for our thing, backpacking, surfing, my favorite mountain biking. And I could add as many as I want. I could go back and add more later. Um, but that's a good start. So we can see we've, in this particular taxonomy, we've built up a list of category, category terms that we're going to use to categorize our tours. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create a content type. Out of the box, we've got articles, pages, and blog entries. We're going to create a special content type called tour. And we're going to save and add fields to it. So just like we could do the user profiles with the um, content types, we can add our own fields. So we're going to put in a few fields. Let's see what we've got here. So let's put in a photo. And that would be an image. Save that. Take the defaults. Drupal out of the uh, like a required field. Sorry. That sounds good. Save it. And we want to give it a date. So I got to back up. So again, modules, you would think out of the box Drupal would have a, a, a field type called date, but it does not. There's a module for that. So I'm going to turn on the date module, the date API, and date pop up, and date views. 
Um, the date pop-up, because when I pop-up date views lets me use dates and views, so that was important to turn on uh, when we go to create our view. So now I can go back to structure, content types, and finish uh, out our tour. So I'm going to manage fields in the tour again. Let's add a date. So a minute ago, we wouldn't have had this date field available. Now we do. Let me use a pop-up calendar when I put in the date. Um, let's only get it to the day. Um, make it a required field. We want to categorize uh, what type of tour it is. Um, so we're going to use a term reference. So unfortunately, Drupal uses taxonomy, vocabulary, and term reference to mean the same thing. I just had to know that. Um, and we'll use this as a select list. And instead of using the freeform tagging, we'll use that vocabulary we just created a minute ago. Let's say you got to create one. This other thing, this number of values, so I'm going to set it, leave it at one, so that means every tour is going to have a specific category type. But if I could set it to two, then any tour could have two category types that are unlimited. You could pick as many as you wanted. Um, so that's sort of one of the things sometimes you play with. And then the last thing I want to do is, is uh, who's going to take us on the tour? So that's going to be, we're going to call that field guide. And we're going to make that a, um, why do we not have user reference? Ah, so again, so when, when you get stumped like that, like something you're expecting to see and it's not there, it may be a module wasn't turned on. So there's a re module called references, which allows nodes and uh, users to be referenced from content. So I needed to turn that on. And I need to update my cheat sheet, apparently. So now if I go back to structure, content types are tour, and I manage the fields, and I want to add a new field called guide. Now I have user reference. So see how I turned on a module, and all of a sudden there's something very deep in the Drupal's menus that's now available to me. It's a little pain in the neck sometimes, but it works. So I'll make that a select list. Um, I only want to be able to reference guide, so I'm going to select the roles that, and I really only want to select guides I have yet to fire, so only active ones. And we'll make that a required field. And I could set that to a higher number. Maybe tours could have one or more guides, but I'm going to leave it at one. So now we've set up our content type, so if I click to add content, now I have a tour thing that I can create. And you can see that everything is fielded. So I got all those fields available to select a guide, all that kind of stuff. So that's why, again, it's important to field stuff in Drupal. So now we want to have a page that lists our tours out. So first of all, remember that develop generate. I'm going to use it again to generate some more content to make some dummy tours for us. So now that we have this tour content type, this is showing up on this develop generate page. You know, 50 is probably enough. That's all good. I just want some dummy content so I don't have to type it in myself. Ah. And a lot of times you'll see this stuff in Drupal. Most of the time, you can ignore it. As a matter of fact, most of the time, uh, there's a place you can turn it off. And I meant to turn that off. So I'm going to go here into logging, logging and errors. And I'm say for right now, don't show me any of that ugly stuff. Know that there is a log in the background. You can always go look at it. Um, it's there. Um, but those things look scary when you're first using Drupal, and in general, they can be ignored. Not always, but in general. So now I want to create a page that has a table of my tours on it. What am I going to make? This is a test. A view. Thank you very much. So I'm going to go to Structure, Views, Create a New View. Let's call it our tours. We're going to do content of type only tours. We don't want blogs showing up on our tour page, and I'm not going to sort it. Again, we'll create a page. We'll make this a table view. Um, let's show 20 a page. Use a pager. Put it in the menu system on the main menu. Call it Tours. Start. So we sort of did the preset up. Now we're back here in this uh, Views thing. So it's going to show a table. We can see that there. Um, it's going to show the title. Uh, it's already got that. So we're going to add some more fields. So we're going to add um, that photo. That's a field we put in our content type. 
Um, we're going to leave label on this time because those are going to be the headings in the table. Um, and Drupal out of the box has three image styles and you can make your own. We're going to put a thumbnail here and let's link the image to the content. So the image, if I click on it, it'll take me to the tour detail page, right? And uh, that's good enough for that. So we added photo. Um, probably want people want to know when the date is, so when the tour is, so let's do that. Um, let's show the short version of the date. That's good. And you can see the table building up down there in the preview. Um, we want to know who's going to take us on this one, so we use that guide field we created. Um, that's all good. What other field did we have? Oh, what type of tour is it, right? That was that taxonomy. Remember we created a term reference using the taxonomy? Um, and we called it type of some sort. Um, type, this type. And that's good. So that's sort of what we're looking for. Um, I probably would reorder that a little and put the picture first so I can click there and go rearrange. And let's put the, where's the photo? The photo first. Save that. That's looking, starting to look pretty good. Um, I might want the title a little bolder, so let's click on this guy just to show you that there's stuff in here you can do with these things. Um, under style settings, I can customize that to be, say, an H3 tag. So you can see it's it's got different styling now. So there's a little bit of stuff like that you can do in the page. You can also put some header information at the top of the page, footer at the bottom, do a whole bunch of stuff. But that pretty much is what I was thinking about when I wanted a tour page on my site. So let's save our view. Oops. And there's our tour page, not really where we want it, but that's the table. I click on a picture, off I go to the, the detail for that. Um, so last thing I would do is, just because I hate misordered things, move that. Since tours are in, you know, the most important thing we're selling to people, I'm going to put it right after the home page. And I think we're running a little short on time. So I'm not going to build out the sidebar block, but that would just be another view that I would be building there. Um, and I'm going to go quickly through uh, image manager. So let's. So on the tour page here, see how the pictures are sort of, they all look funny because they're different sizes. Um, Drupal has this great image preset thing. Um, so let's just go into image styles. I can create my own, but all I'm going to do that we were using thumbnail, if you remember, I'm going to edit the image preset for thumbnail. And I'm going to override it. And I'm going to say, I'm going to get rid of what it's doing. Yes. And I'm going to select a scale and crop. And let's scale and crop to 100 by 100 for the thumbnail size. So now it's going to be a, a nice, perfect square. And the beauty of doing this is you can go change this later, too. And Drupal will take care of updating everything. And it only updates it when somebody actually needs that image. And it keeps the original image as it was uploaded. So you never lose the original image. And Drupal can sort of reset them as you go. So now if we go to our tour page, you can see those are nice square images right now. And that's, if all of a sudden the client goes, oh, I really want it to be 80 by 80, you just go change the image preset and you're done, as opposed to anybody going into Photoshop to change things. Um, so there's that. I'm not going to show you Path Auto, but um, there's a module called Path Auto. You can see up here how the, the nodes are, it's node slash ID. That doesn't mean anything. It's not good for SEO. There's a module called Path Auto, which gives you control over that so that um, if I go to a tour on my little site here, you can see it's tour and the name of the tour up there. So Path Auto is a module that gives you control using tokens about what's going to show up in the URL. Um, so it's an important module to sort of play with. I'll just skip it. Um, still got a couple minutes. So another module we'll turn on is web form module, which is pretty cool. If you need to put up a quick web form, um, this is a great module to do it. So I'm just enabling the module at the moment. Now I go to add content. I got a web form I can create. So let's create a feedback web form for people that have been on our tours. Um, I could give them some welcome intro. Let's put a let's put it in the menu system in the main menu. Let's give it a URL and make it feedback. 
So now I get this web form that I can sort of add fields to. So let's say, tell me what tour you went on. Make that mandatory. Um, rate the tour. Let's make that a select list. Make them rate the tour too. Oops. Stop! I know I'm almost done. Uh, and then there's this, you'll have to look this up, but um, great. You put in these value pairs. The, the first thing is what's stored in the database. The second thing is what people see. Good. Not God. Good. Bad. And the last one I probably want to add is I'm going to put in the person's email and make that mandatory and save that. And then I could go through a whole exercise of deciding to send, configure an email to send back to the person and, and send the email for the, that the form was filled out to the appropriate person that the company to figure it out. But basically having done that, um, I now have a feedback form on our website that'll do all sorts of cool emails that people would be able to fill in. Um, I won't do this as well, but there's a module called Captcha. There's other ones. Well, Honeypot is another one, and Malum is another one that I can, you know, I can make put captchas at the bottom of the form, so it's, it sort of helps stop spam. Um, so if you uh, if you want to sort of look at that, those modules, they do that. And then last thing I'll do, I'm gonna go to Appearance. We they're called Themes as well. Um, this is the theme page. I've installed a bunch of other themes that are available. So let's just change. Oops, where to go? Our theme to the Drupal Ace theme. So I'm going to enable and set by default Drupal Ace. And now, if I go to our homepage, uh, you know it's got a sort of different look and feel. So out in Drupal Land, there's on Drupal.org, there's free contributed themes. There's sort of several different categories of themes. One is pre-built ones like this. It's already got a look and feel. It stands alone on its own. If you want to build up your own theme, people often use starter themes. The big ones are Omega, Fusion, and Zen. Zen is probably the easiest one to start as a, as a new person to Drupal because it's got lots of documentation about what to do. Um, and then you can write custom themes from scratch and just build it up entirely on your own. And there's a thousand places you can buy Dr Drupal themes, you know, Template Monster, places like that out in the real world. Um, so the themes, the look and feel. Um, the, le the other couple modules that I'll mention are, there's a module called View Slideshow, so that's how most people do slideshows. There's a bunch of other modules, but that's one to use. So when you add that module and turn it on and go to Create a View, now under the, uh, the way you want it displayed, you got grid, table, all those things that were there, plus slideshow. Again, Drupal, you turn a module on, new things show up in Drupal. Um, there's another module called Colorbox, which everybody loves. Um, you know, so that's this guy. So Colorbox is a module you want to use if you want sort of that kind of effect. And then you turn it on, you basically configure your content to use Colorbox. Um, there's another module called Display Suite. So by default, Drupal is going to lay your content types out from top of the page to bottom of the page in just one big long list. And you can write all sorts of template files and themes to have control over that. But if you don't want to write PHP, this uh, Display Suite module, and um, I'm pretty sure there's a session on this today or tomorrow, would be a great one to sit through. That See how this one's laid out with the picture on the left and the stuff over here and the stuff over there? Display Suite gives you control over the node content and how it's laid out through a configuration interface. So if I go in here under structure on this built out site content types for my tour, and I manage the display of it, you can see I got header, I got regions I can put things in, and, and this is all from the module display suite. And I can I have a bunch of different layouts I can use for my nodes. So this is a really important one to consider using if you want to do anything more than just top to bottom content layout. So there's that one. Um, there's a whole bunch of SEO modules. I'll just mention the, the obvious ones. Google Analytics, because you want to do that for your customers. Meta tags, if you're still using meta tags. Um, page title gives you control over what's in the tab at the top page, which is really important for SEO. Global redirect. Drupal keeps two URLs to each piece of the content, which is bad for Google. So global redirect just takes care of that. You just install it and turn it on. And there's another one called SEO check checklist, which is, that's all it is. It's a checklist of all the things in Drupal you should do to, for good SEO practices, so it's a good one to install and look at the list. And then the last one that you should never build a site without is called Backup and Migrate. It lets you, from the interface, backup and, if necessary, restore your database. So when you're in the middle of developing a site, you should back up the database often enough because all of your content and all of your configuration is in the database. And backup and migrate can also be set up on a schedule, so it'll do that automatically once an hour, once a day, whatever you like. 
Um, and also behind the scenes, Drupal has a cron run. Um, things like that run on cron, so you want to make sure cron is turned on and is running at some reasonable uh, level. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's our, our site built out um, in just about 45 minutes. So any, any last, any questions? Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. This is, this is the only one I'm doing today. The next, the one at 11 that I like the best, I'm going to actually sit in. It's, uh, it's a woman named Zakia who does uh, responsive theming. She's a sage person. And it's a great intro to, to theming using the, I think she's talking about using the Omega theme. Yeah. You know of any, uh, maybe online tutorials on video? Or yeah, good question. The, the two big ones um, uh, are uh, Lullabot is a company that does Drupalize.me. And then uh, Chris Shattuck, a great guy, uh, met him a bunch of times, have helped him out as well, called buildamodule.com. They both cost, I don't know exactly, something like 35 bucks a month. And they're, you know, they're 500 plus video kind of stuff that walk you through a lot of stuff. So those are good resources. Look, there's a lot of free ones out there, but if you sort of want a structured approach to it, those would be the, the two big ones. Um, Drupalize.me. Yeah, I think they're here. Um, these are the two. They're at the end of the slides. If you're at, and there's a bunch of books um, that they're out there. The problem I find with most of the books is they're a lot of theory and not a lot of practice, um, which is why I sort of like doing this thing. It's like, let's see it, us doing it as opposed to talking about doing it. Um, so I'll close it up. Thank you all for coming. If you want to come up and chat, I'm here. Um, my business cards are here. We also at our booth have these cool stylus pen things, so feel free to grab one of those. And have fun at camp. By the way, do you build... Um let me just turn this off real quick here. I gotta figure this out. Uh...